And it's just like that. You never know who you're dealing with. Like, you crazy, but bro, I'm the folk crazy too. So skip first kill and just watch Orphan. <laughs> What's up? It's Nikki. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, King Nikki TV, where I give you commentary on popular movies and TV shows. In this video, I will be reviewing the new movie, Orphan First Kill, the prequel to the 2009 movie, Orphan. Now, I am a huge fan of Orphan. I love that movie. <laughs> So I was pretty excited to see Orphan First Kill. <sighs> Guys, I started off real disappointed. I'm not going to lie. Now, so the movie opens up with the character we know as Esther starting off as Lena. She is in an insane asylum. And y'all, honestly, the first part of this movie, I feel like it was so predictable and stupid and obvious and contrived. <laughs> I also felt like it wasn't flowing well. I just, I really was like, man, I should have saw Fall. Like, that's literally how I felt when I was sitting in the theater. I was like, bro, I should have saw Fall. Why well, I should have saw this? So, she's in the insane asylum. A new art teacher comes, and everyone's like, Lena is missing, so they have to lock it down and try and find her. Now, the head doctor opens a room and just puts the art teacher in there and just like, wait here. Baby, we ain't gonna check the room. Of course, Lena was in said room, and of course, she looks like a child. So the art teacher's just like, "Hey, when you know your, your parents work here, so y'all, come on, now, child. This was just so. Of course, though, the doctor never one comes in and stops everything before something happens because Lena had a little little pills in her hand about to attack the poor lady. For what I don't know." Now, this is the new art teacher working with Lena, and so much is just so obvious, y'all. In art class, another mental patient, you can clearly see that Lena is, like, training her like a dog, and you know that's going to come into play. Y'all, this was just so, everything was so obvious at the first part, so Lena finally attempts her escape, right? She is able to manipulate a guard. She gets out. Now, y'all, she going down the hallway, and she's using the badge to get through certain areas. She opens a door just as a orderly or someone is coming down the hall, pushing someone in a wheelchair. For me, it's no way she shouldn't have been seen. And also, why was he not thinking, how did this door open? And she hides behind a glass door. Like, you know how the top of the door is glass, and yet it got little film and stuff on it but you can clearly see a person's silhouette but whatever he don't see her she gets out she goes and is at the exit and it is a guard and who else is there but her little puppy dog that she trained and she says her little word and the girl attacks and she tosses her her treat and gets out now while all of this is going on we saw the art teacher leave and get in her car child lady should have been left the time it took uh, Lena to escape. It ain't no way that our teacher should have still been out there getting in her car child. But anyway, she is. Now, she's in the safety of her car. Doors are closed. She sees Lena standing in front of her car. Baby, I just drove away. <laughs> but baby, that's just me. What y'all think the lady do, child? Lena just disappears, and the lady opens her door and gets out of the car and runs back into the asylum. I wouldn't have did that. I don't know why this lady did that, but whatever, she does it. She goes in, the man is dead, and y'all, this is the year 2007. Baby pictures should have been everywhere. I didn't understand, maybe because they in Russia, I don't know how stuff work over there, I, I don't know what their version of the FBI's most wanted list is, but this girl picture should have been everywhere, but whatever. Now, and it should have at least been everywhere for the Russian police, but whatever, we'll, we'll get to that. So, the art teacher goes back to her car, and it is just so obvious. It is so obvious that Lena is in her car, y'all. She gets home. The hatchback opens up. She goes to look. Nothing's there. She just closes it because, you know, trunks do that, I guess. And, of course, she gets in her car, and she's attacked by Lena. I mean, sorry, guys. She didn't get in her car. She got in her house and is attacked by Lena. And then... The girl just gets on the computer and looks for missing kids and just picks one. And I'm just like, for real? Like this? Y'all, this wasn't, the store wasn't flowing for me. It just felt, 
stuff was just very abrupt and stuff was very obvious and contrived and i just really wasn't enjoying it so she gets dressed up she goes to a park and it's just sitting there and the officer comes over obviously she looks like a child and he's trying to help her baby why the russian police don't ain't no apbi for this missing woman from the same asylum who done kill folk i guess not child because you know what the russian police do they just send the girl home to america this ain't made no sense to me you mean to tell me now i ain't law enforcement but if a child is supposedly missing and then she just say i'm this child now kids likely don't have fingerprints in the system but baby we ain't gonna do no dna test before we reunite folks i guess not and especially what like wouldn't the government american government or embassy be involved if it's a american child in russia that's coming back i don't know child but it ain't make no sense so anyway so we are introduced to Julia Styles' family, who are Julia Styles is Trisha, then there's her husband Alan and their son Gunner. Their daughter Esther has been missing for four years. Lena is posing as Esther, right? Now, the feel when Esther is reunited with this family was really odd. First of all, Gunner the son just ain't even really care. <laughs> like, I mean, he really just did not care that she was back. And I I was sitting there like he didn't care that his sister was missing he didn't he didn't have his sister back but anyway you know movies make teenagers weird so i kind of just was like well he a teenager he caught up in his teenage ish and his friends so whatever i didn't i didn't really think nothing of it now the dad he was the only one who to me really had any real emotion right to esther being back and the mom trisha seemed really off to me i don't know like for example trisha and her husband alan go off to a gala Baby, if my child been missing for four years and I have just been reunited with her, I'm not going to a gala. Baby, I'm going to be stuck by my child's side like Luke, but whatever. Y'all, Esther is home with Gunner. He has his friends over, right? We have a detective who was uh, working on the case of Esther being missing, right? He comes to the house. Esther sees him creep into her room and there is a record player and they kept everything in Esther's room the same. That was a record player. The cop takes the record that has the real Esther's fingerprints, puts it in a little baggie, and he leaves. And, y'all, Esther puts on her coat and stuff because it's snowing. It's winter. Baby, Esther goes to the cop's apartment. How did Esther get there? He's in his apartment. How did Esther get inside? But what up, child? At this point, I'm really not enjoying the movie. And I was also not enjoying the movie because it was feeling like a mirror setup of the first movie. And I say that because the mom, Trisha, was starting to, to me, it felt like, was feeling a little off with Esther. For example, Esther goes to paint with the dad and Julia Stiles is looking at her through a window and she sees Esther kind of touch she did a, a portrait of the dad she touches the lips on the portrait and it touches her lips it was moments like that certain moments throughout the mom just seemed very leery or weird when it comes to esther and i was sitting there thinking if they set this up where it's the mom who is the only one who can see something's off with esther and nobody else just like an orphan that's going to annoy me and at first, I thought it would be the brother. I thought that that was why the brother was acting very weird, is that he was the only person who knew this wasn't his sister. So when it was starting to feel like that person was going to be Julia Stiles, I was annoyed. I was like, come on, our child. We can't do the same thing we did in the first movie. But baby, let me tell you, I was wrong like a mofo. So Esther is at the cop's house, and she literally, first of all, child, he makes a cocktail, right? And I done got my cutting board and chopped up fruit for many a cocktail, but I ain't never stabbed <laughs> the knife straight into the cutting board. I ain't never did that. I thought that was kind of odd. Anyway, they flash to the cutting board and the knife being missing. And I kind of hate when movies do stuff like that. Like, child, y'all, baby, the audience ain't stupid, bro. This is all so obvious. Like, bro, we got it. <laughs> anyway, Esther comes up behind the detective just as he is running the fingerprints and it pops up that this is not a match. And she easily stabs him to death from behind. And y'all, I kind of didn't like this. This detective went out so easy. I don't know. I did not like this scene. I didn't like this setup. The, the first of all, the detective part was so small. And then he finds out something so big and he's just easily killed off. I didn't like that. But y'all, I started to like it, bruh. 
she stabs him. He's laying there and she's like, how did you know that I wasn't Esther? Her own mother doesn't know. Y'all, the detective says she does know. And at this point, Trisha, Julia Stiles, the mom, walks in and shoots and kills the detective. Let me tell you, child. I woke up. I was in the thing. I'm be honest. I was bored. I went for the movie, child. But when this happened, baby, I woke up. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know what. I didn't know if Julia Styles walked in and killed the tether. She thought she was protecting her daughter. I didn't know what. I, I like. I had no clue, y'all. This was good. This was crazy. But y'all, the detective saying. That the mom does know that's not her daughter. What part did the cop play in all this? Like, how did he, like, how was he privy to the fact that Julia Stiles knew that wasn't her daughter? I wish we got more info on that. Because I'm kind of, I don't know that if I missed something, if I didn't connect something. But how did the cop know that? I thought that was crazy. So, y'all, come to find out. Julia Stiles know this ain't her daughter. Because, baby, daughter dead. <laughs> baby, Esther dead. Come to find out, she says that Gunner played too rough with Esther and accidentally killed her. Baby, I feel like Gunner just killed her. But anyway, she covered up the murder. And the dad is the only person not privy to this. And she goes into an agreement, an arrangement with Esther. They drop the cop's body down into this well or something, which is basically where they put the real Esther's body. And they say, look, you can stay here and play Esther, and we're going to just ride this out. And she tell, the son don't want to do this, but she's like, it's too suspicious. Esther just came back. She can't disappear again. And plus... The dad changed and, you know, was heavily affected by his daughter being missing and became a new man and, you know, some pep in his step was happy to have his daughter back and the mom didn't want to jeopardize that. Now, I have to say, this was a great twist. Superb twist. I love the aspect of this twisted family dynamic that Esther is coming into. And I love the fact that Esther didn't know who she was dealing with. And Trisha ain't gonna, ain't know who they was dealing with. And I love situations like this. There's a movie that I really love where you have this serial killer, right? And then you have this band, like this gang of bad guys who targets him. And it's like, bro, you don't know who you're dealing with. And it's just like that. You never know who you're dealing with. Like, you crazy. But, bro, other folk crazy, too. So, I love that aspect. And I love the fact that it wasn't a situation like the first where this family just falls victim to Esther. But I could see right off the bat that this was not a good idea. I was like, first of all, Esther going to get sick of playing the child. This is a grown behind woman. It's like, imagine if I had to just walk around pretending like I was a child all the time. She's going to get sick of that. And the only reason Esther stayed, because they told us at the same asylum that this is what Esther does. She pretends to be a child. A family takes her in. She robs a blind. She dips out. And she went to do that with this family and was actually getting ready to leave. But she was in love with the father, which we learned in the first orphan movie that she had been in love with the dad. So she ended up staying. And I just knew this was a recipe for disaster. But this was... This twist was really good, y'all. And I was like, bro, I'm hyped now. I'm real hyped about this now. <laughs> now, Julia Stiles and Gunner, y'all, they was just, they were being so mean to Esther. And I felt like it's such great filmmaking and such great writing where you, when you can get the audience to feel sympathy or root for a character like Esther, baby, Esther evil. Okay, don't get that twisted. But when they were calling her a freak and making fun of her and when Julia Stiles, you know, figured out that she had a crush on her husband and, and talking to her about how sick he would be, of, you know, as any man would if he knew about her condition. It, like, you felt like, oh, man, like, I'm feeling bad for, <laughs> for the bad guy. <laughs> now, they set up a situation where... Julia Stiles goes to drug Esther, right? She puts something in her food, and I think it was just something to get her to sleep. Because her and Gunner is just like, bro, this ain't going to work. 
Now, Esther is, is feeling away. She asks if she um, step away from the table. Julia Stout tells her, you know, you're good. You're going to have dinner in your room. Now, it was this rat that Esther was fond of. that I was seeing like, trying to let that happen to this rat child. But the rat was the only person in the house that Esther liked besides the dad. <laughs> she goes to give the plate of food to the rat. She wakes up. Y'all, the rat is dead. And Esther gets up the next morning. I'm mad the rat had to be collateral damage in this inch. That rat ain't deserved to die. Esther gets up. She makes this nice breakfast, right? But Julia Stiles is like, oh, you know, I, I don't really eat. I just have my smoothie. And she's like, yes, mommy, I made your smoothie. <laughs> Baby, Julia Stiles drinks the, from the smoothie, right? But she, you know, everybody on guard. So she takes a sip. She drinks, you know. She go to the sink. To pour out the smoothie. Baby, the dead rat is in the smoothie. Do you not know how I would have fell the fuck out? Like, I would have gagged. I would have died. Baby, y'all. That, I had a visceral reaction to that scene. I, that would. Yo, baby, yeah. It's the guy her ass. <laughs> that was insane. So, the dad ends up taking a train on the trip. He's an artist. He's going to, like, show his work for a gallery. And Esther wants to go with him, child. Esther just feels, she know that it's just finna go down with these two. Like, she don't really know that it's just finna happen right now. But she's like, Daddy, take me with you. So, she ends up with uh, Julia Styles and the son. And, like, at the train station, it pops off. They get into a fight. Esther runs. She's able to get into the car and drive off right. Baby, Esther get in the car. She put on her some lipstick. She smoke her little cigarette. Like, yeah, baby, I get to be grown again. And she gets pulled over by a cop that knows the family that takes Esther home. And Esther gets in the house. She is upstairs in her room, y'all. And all of a sudden, Gunner and Trisha walk in. And the look, y'all, this acted it so well. The look on her face when they walk in, she's just like, oh, hell, we doing this right now? Like, it was, this was good. I love the aspect of this Twisted Family. I love the aspect of Esther versus Trisha. I, like, this was all really, really, really good. And this is when we get to the final act, the final showdown that every movie like this builds up to. Esther versus Gunner and Trisha. And I feel like at first this plays out really well. This plays out really well. They Gunner is holding her. Uh, Trisha's plan is to make this look like a suicide. But Esther spits in her face, is able to get out of Gunner's grip. She runs. Gunner catches her at the stairs just as dad is calling Trisha because the cop called him about the daughter trying to run away. He pushes Esther down the stairs. While she's on the phone, Gunner's like, yo, she left. Y'all know the ever classic, the person down, do you look, and then <laughs> they gone. <laughs> so they're looking for Esther. Gunner finds Esther first. He does that jousting stuff, and he has this little knife or sword, whatever the jousting stick is called. But child, baby, Esther got a little bow and arrow, and she shoots him, and she stabbed this nigga to death. I'm talking about... She effed that, that little nigga up. <laughs> and Julia Styles comes in and their fight ensues. And I thought this was all really good and was playing out really well. Now, I thought the dad the dad already told Julia Styles, he coming straight back home. He on the way. I thought he was going to walk in in the middle of their fight at a point when Julia Stiles was winning the fight and either attack Julia Stiles or kill her. Or I thought something was building up to the dad. He's the only one on the outside. I thought something was building up to the dad and everything coming and exploding and the chaos of him finding out the truth about Esther, his real daughter Esther, the truth about the fake Esther slash Lena, the truth about his wife and son. Now, a fire ends up happening. Something on the stove or something like that while they're fighting, right? They end up getting to the roof. And to me, this didn't make no sense. I'm going to be trying to get out the burning house, but Julia Stiles is just focused on killing Esther, right? Now, they're on the roof. They're battling to get out. They get higher and higher on the roof, and then they get to a point where Esther and Trisha are hanging, and the dad comes, 
And I'm thinking, oh, wow, he's going to have to choose between his daughter and his wife. Julia Stiles yells out that she's not Esther or whatever. And instead of, and I'm saying like, baby, it, it was right there. It was right there. Instead of the dad having to make a choice, Julia Stiles just slips and falls. And I did not understand that. We never got the moment of the dad finding out the truth of his family or having to make this decision between Esther and Trisha. It was so much that I felt they were building up to when it came to Alan and all this craziness that was happening. That just never happened. And I did not understand that. Now, Esther, y'all know, puts in these fake teeth. And when the dad pulls her up and his hands is on her face and the fake teeth move, and she is revealed that she's not his daughter. And she's like, we can be together. Baby, Alan got to fall and die. And I got to say, this ending was such a letdown. It was such a letdown. I just did not understand how we could put so much in motion just to have it go nowhere. I, I That was really, really disappointing for me. I really didn't like that. Now... I was confused because if to the world, this is Esther of this family, baby, should she be rich? Because the family was rich. So, baby, what my inheritance? And what didn't make sense to me is this narrative that the family dies in a fire. But, baby, we ain't do no autopsy. And you don't even have to get to the autopsy part where they actually cut the body up. Because even though the son body could be burnt, you could clearly see an arrow sticking out of boy, the boy's chest. How did this go down as just a house fire? I don't, I could see it going down as a fire if all you got is the mom and dad bodies. We tried to get out of the fire. We ended up on the roof. Maybe we fell and that's how that happened. And even Julia Stiles, you know, injuries from their fight, maybe they could have attributed that to the fall or to trying to get out of a burning house. But the son with all them stab wounds and an arrow literally sticking out of his chest, maybe that don't make no sense. That did not make any sense. Now, the movie ends with the therapist. And this was something that also didn't make sense to me. They take Esther to go see a therapist, right? Who is a therapist that the real Esther was seeing before she disappeared. But, baby, the real Esther was, like, six years old or something like that when she disappeared. Baby, why was a six-year-old seeing a therapist? I never understood that with the movie. I will have to say... Orphan 2009 was better. This prequel, it disappointed in my opinion. The twist was amazing. High caliber twist. And I love the direction they went in with that twist. To not have it be the typical setup that Orphan 2009 was. I, man, that was a great idea. Great idea. But this movie was really poorly executed in my personal opinion. The first part of the movie, I was so bored. It was so contrived. And then we get that twist, which really ramped it up. Like, wow, this is good. But we built up so much and we set so much up in terms of Alan and everything finally coming to a head. But it never does. And then that ending, man, it was such a letdown. To not have the dad make a choice, to have Julia Stiles just fall. That was such a, such a letdown. Such a letdown. Now, I did love a lot about this movie. I love the twist, as I've said. I love the reveal of Esther's black light painting. I love how in Orphan 2009, Esther in that family was way more manipulative and sinister and calculating. And with this family, Esther was way more pitiful and way more, I want to say kind of a victim. Like, I don't want to say victim, but that's kind of how it felt with her within this family. I love those aspects, but this movie really fell flat for me. I'm going to have to give Orphan First Kill a 4.5 out of 10. Uh, and I really want to say a 4 out of 10, but because of that twist, I'm going to say a 4.5 out of 10. In my personal opinion, skip First Kill and just watch Orphan. <laughs> That's how I feel. Skip first kill and just watch Orphan. Look, prequels are hard. They are. Prequels are hard. I maybe can think of one prequel off the top of my head that was not better than original, but was a great prequel. 
they're hard they're hard and yeah first kill no i'm sorry thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you in the next one thank you